Hi everyone, it's Melissa coming to you live from my living room again. Um, tonight we're going to talk about, originally the, the email and, and the excerpts came out talking about immunotherapy versus chemotherapy and, and what's the difference and, and how does all this stuff work. And, and so when I was preparing this little talk, I had thought about how there's so much nomenclature out there for biologic therapy. And so um, instead of just talking about immunotherapy versus chemotherapy, um, because that, that nomenclature is a little bit unclear, I am going to talk about immunotherapy and how it relates to chemotherapy. Immunotherapy in this case would be considered in, in most realms to be the checkpoint inhibitors, PD-1 agents, CTLA-4, um, the interleukins, interferon, um, and that in, in that it helps the immune system to work better to help recognize cancer cells. But I'm also going to talk about targeted therapy, how that works, um, and oncolytic viruses just very briefly so that you know how that how those work as well. Um, disclaimer, I'm not an immunologist. <laughs> so um, I tried to take this topic and explain it at the very basic level. I know the camera angle is a little weird. It's because I'm going to use props here in a minute because I found that that's the easiest way to kind of explain really complicated topic is, is to relate it to something normal. Um, the other disclaimer is that these are going to be very basic explanations. I'm not going to go in the details of exactly how it works, um, just give a general feel for how it works. Um, one thing that I do need, um, I need two things from you. One, well, three. The first thing is that if you're watching, I need you to pop in the comments and tell us where you're watching from, both the city and the state, because we want to kind of get a feel for where our audience is coming from. Um, that way, if we have a lot of folks out on the West Coast, maybe we can change the time to be a little more accommodating for them as well. So. Uh, pop in the comments if you're watching, where you're watching from, city and state. I'll mention that again at the end. The second thing that I need from everyone out there is to give me information about what other things you want to see, um, what topics you want to talk about. Um, specifically, one of the things that I have an idea for is if you want to see a specific Facebook Live on just targeted therapy or just immunotherapy, shoot a thumbs up in the comment section. I'll know that that's what that's for. But give us all your ideas. Definitely let us know where you're watching from, okay? I'm gonna try to get to any questions that you have um, at the very end. That way I won't screw up my train of thought and forget to tell you something. Um, if I don't answer your question, it's either because it's a little too private to talk about on this forum, and I'd ask that you reach out to me on the Ask an Expert page, either by filling out the form or by calling um, the 1877 number. Um, but I promise to try to get to as many relevant questions as I can, okay? So let's talk about the immune system. So one of the ways that I found after reading tons about it um, that I found was really nice and an easy way to kind of explain the immune system is the analogy of the soil and plants. So in this analogy, this is your immune system. The immune system is your soil. It provides your body with nutrients and blood, in this case of the body, blood. So water and nutrients, it helps your body to maintain and be well tended for. Um, the no normally the soil would be able to prevent weeds, cancer cells, from growing. So in this case, this is a healthy immune system with flowers growing, no, no cancer cell weeds, um, and a healthy soil. This, extending that analogy, would be the body with cancer. So here, the purple flowers or weeds are the cancer cells. These are still the healthy cells. So cancer cells are like weeds in your garden. When, when weeds happen to come, um, the entire garden can eventually suffer because the healthy cells have to compete for space. They also have to compete for nutrients. So eventually these cancer cells move in and, and not only do they crowd out the healthy cells or cause them to not be healthy, but they also can damage the soil as well. So how do how does the body combat this or how do oncologists try to combat this? For a really long time they had and only had chemotherapy. So how does chemotherapy work? So in this analogy, chemotherapy is like taking weed killer and spraying weed killer on your entire garden. 
it affects the healthy flowers, it affects the weeds, it affects, affects and can harm the immune system or the soil itself. So there's tons of damage caused by chemotherapy because it's not specific to anything. There's various types of chemotherapy and different types of agents, but this analogy and, and really what chemotherapy does is it affects all the cells and your immune system in general when fighting your cancer. Immunotherapy, on the other hand, is like taking weed killing fertilizer and sprinkling it on the garden, in this case, the immune system. So now the immune system is enhanced and it can do a better job at keeping the weeds under control just by increasing its own normal processes. Too much weed killer, killer fertilizer can actually cause damage to the soil as well. And that is how and why um, sometimes immunotherapy, PD-1 inhibitors, checkpoint inhibitors in general can cause autoimmune things to happen. So it enhances the immune system so much and so well that it starts to attack itself sometimes because it just doesn't, you know, can't control itself. Um, I know that a lot of the folks in our clinic are used to me using the analogy of a fan. So it's like your immune system is like a ceiling fan and you have a room full of paper. So when the immune system is turned on, that fan is blowing a wonderful breeze and cooling everyone and the papers are all staying where they're supposed to. When you turn it up or when an autoimmune process happens, that fan is in high gear and it's blowing papers all over the room because now it's out of control. And instead of it being a pleasant breeze, now unfortunately it's affecting all the things in the room as well. So in this analogy, immunotherapy is like adding fertilizer to your garden to help enhance the soil, your immune system, to work a little bit better to help kill the weeds and but keep the healthy cells healthy. Hopefully that makes sense. Targeted therapy um, works a little bit differently. I'm trying to get in the frame because I'm backwards. But targeted therapy is like taking a specific thing that only affects or for the most part only affects the weed killer. So it's like spraying specific weed killer spray only specific to these cancer cells. So um, targeted therapy would be like the BRAF and MEK inhibitors. Some of the other targeted therapy that's still in clinical trials um, affect other pathways, but we'll talk about that a little bit later about how that works. But targeted therapy is like only targeting the bad thing, the flowers or the weeds, I'm sorry. And still sometimes the healthy cells and the soil, usually the soil stays healthy. Sometimes the flowers can be a little bit or the healthy cells can be a little bit affected by these targeted therapies, but for the most part, they are extremely specific to weeds or cancer cells. Okay, so to activate that a little bit further, we're gonna talk about what happens with the immune system in general. So I have lots of props today, so sorry for that in advance. <laughs> So let's say that these are cells or golf balls on a plate, but cells. And when you have, so the, in this example, the normal cells are these orange ones and this yellow one is say a bacteria or a virus. So the reason that I started with this is that it's a little easier to understand. So when you have a bacteria or a virus, normally what happens is you have a detective cell or a troll. <laughs> who is walking around the immune system and it actually looks and checks the system. So I, I like to call him the detector cell. So the detector cell notices that there's something that doesn't belong. When that happens, he gets activated, gets a flag, and he marches out to the immune system and he says, hey, there's something here that doesn't belong. So that causes a fighter cell, or in this case, a Tyrannosaurus rex. These are, for this purpose, T cells. So what happens when the detector cell gets alerted and tells the activator or the fighter cell that something bad is happening, he comes and he starts to investigate the situation and he's gonna take care of it. But sometimes he needs help. So he gets activated as well and causes his, his friends to come and they all attack the virus or bacteria and it goes away, okay? So that makes sense. The problem is that cancer cells 
are really good at hiding sometimes. And the reason is that they came from normal cells, just something went bad to make them not grow appropriately. So sometimes they're really hard for the detector to see. So in this example, it would be like normal cell. Here's a cancer cell. It looks pretty similar, but as you can see, the cancer cell has these little black smudges on it. So it's slightly different. Almost the same, but a little bit different. So it's really easy for the immune system to sometimes miss it, especially if this troll is not exactly doing his job appropriately, if he's under stress, if he's sick from something else, maybe he has diabetes and he can't you know, function normally. So what sometimes happens is that the immune system misses it, and then that attack process doesn't happen. Sometimes it can hide. So sometimes it gets a mask on and it just hides in the corner, no one sees it. So one way that the immune system um, can hide is by being masked or being hidden. PD-1, at its very simplified terms, its job is to unmask the immune system. So it would be as if this guy's hiding with his mask and all of a sudden PD-1 comes and it unmasks the immune system and then, hey, I can see that cell now, something's bad. So then it can cause the T cell guy to come and, and all the process of the T rex T cells to come and kill the cancer. That's one way that the immune system can fix it. Another way or another way that the immune system can hide is that the detector cell comes, he gets alerted, he goes to tell the fighter cell to come but then what happens is that the immune system somehow managed to deactivate the attacker cell so that it can't call its friends. And so this thing is fighting and fighting, but he might not be able to fight hard enough because his friends can't come and help him. So CTLE-4 would be where this would be effective to help. When that happens, it helps make this guy just call and call and call his friends. So his attacker friends just keep coming and T cells keep flooding the area and it allows the body to just continually make these T cells or fighter cells to attack the cancer. So that's how very basically anti-CTLA-4 works. Um, to talk about targeted therapy and how that works, we can look at it like this. So if we have a cell, our cancer cell, and it takes A, B, and C growth pathways to make it grow into this big giant cancer cell. So the only way that it can get from here to here is to have these pathways to tell it to continue to grow. Using BRAF and MEK inhibitors, or some of the other targeted therapies that are still in clinical trial, it actually takes this pathway away and this pathway away, so that now it only has this lonely pathway and some accessory pathways in which to allow it to grow. So um, one of the other ways that it sometimes is explained to, to patients is in, in clinic that BRAF mech is sort of like throwing a wrench in the middle of your transmission. Without your transmission, your car can't go. So um, it pokes a hole in the transmission. And so your transmission might try to go, or your car might try to go, but it's damaged now, it lacks the growth factors and things that are needed to, to allow it to continue to proliferate and it dies. So sometimes there can be unfortunate resistance or sometimes your tumor gets really smart and starts going down the other pathways. Sometimes it figure out, figures out a way to take these blocks away and, the, and then the pathways are open again and, and the tumor will grow. So there's lots of things that kind of play into how um, you know how things can can disrupt these agents from working properly, and that's sort of where clinical trials come into play by adding additional therapies to the ones that already exist: the PD-1 blockade, the anti-CT4, anti-CTLA-4 blockade, um, the targeted therapies. Um, we're constantly using clinical trial medicine to add you know, these therapies together to try to take a multifactorial approach to really treating the tumor. Um, the only other one that I, that I wanted to really touch on really quickly 
um, and didn't is the oncolytic vaccines or oncolytic viruses. And the way that these kind of work is, um, back to the original example, noticing a virus, the yellow ball, inside all of these other normal cells is pretty easy for the body to do. And so um, oncolytic viruses essentially use viruses and they sneak a melanoma treatment or other cancer treatment on the inside of it. So what happens is when the body recognizes the virus in the, and in melanoma, um, the herpes virus, because it's a very common virus that the immune system is, is used to recognizing and can eradicate pretty quickly, what it does is when it, when it recognizes the herpes virus, the immune system attacks it, but guess what? It's a Trojan horse and it releases the melanoma treatment that is hiding inside of it. So it's actually a really smart, eloquent treatment. It works really great, especially in tumors that can be injected because it's directly delivering um, that medication to those cells. So um, there's lots of ways that biologic therapy can actually um, be given. Um, there's many different, as we just talked about, options. Um, at a later time, probably we'll get on and we'll talk about just immunotherapy and just you know the targeted therapy so that that way we can get a better grasp of exactly how it works and what the adverse events are and side effects. Um, but for tonight, I just wanted to give a general overview as to the differences between biologic therapy, which really uses your immune system to help your cancer and doesn't have a lot of collateral damage, versus chemotherapy, which actually causes a lot of collateral damage. Damages healthy cells, damages cancer cells, but has a lot of side effects. So um, hopefully that is very clear from the explanation. If it's not, I am more than happy to try to explain that offline to whoever. Um, hopefully the props didn't make it too confusing. Um, I definitely will try to see what I can look at for um, questions. Let's go back and see what we can see here. So we have lots of people checking in. That's really exciting. So promising emergent therapies, that's a really good idea. We should definitely talk about that. Um, and Arlene, I actually would definitely want you to um, contact us outside of here about the diet and stuff like that. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely happy to answer that question another time offline. Um, <laughs> Lori, I'm glad that the props helped you. That's good. <laughs> um, so essentially, if I'm going to, you know, sit here for a couple more minutes and say hello to some of my friends, I see a lot of people that are tuning in. I really appreciate that. Um, I definitely want to make sure that we get all of your questions answered. Um, hopefully everything was just so clear that there aren't any questions. Um, let's see. Patricia, the, inflam the inflammation that comes from BRAF MAC inhibitors can change the microenvironment. So yes, that can actually make um, a more successful environment for immunotherapy. They, they do know that that does sometimes happen. Um, and that's also true, and they're, they're looking into um, other agents that can cause a, a local um, inflammatory process to allow um, the immunotherapy to um, be directed more towards the tumor. So there are um, like toll-like receptors, they're called, that actually are injected into tumors that actually can help immunotherapy work a little bit better as well. So there's lots of things that are kind of happening out there with that. Um, Taff and Lauren Mechanist are targeted therapy, Carol, that is correct. Um, uh, the similar gene mutations for bladder cancer and melanoma. Um, renal cell and melanoma do have a lot of um, gene mutations that are somewhat similar. That's why they have a lot of the same um, therapies that are used for them, um, which is super helpful. Oh, let's see what else. Oh, I have another one. Can you explain how targeted therapy with immunotherapy or chemotherapy with immunotherapy works? Oh, triplet therapy. Um, we probably could go on, and I would like to, Keith, actually do an entire Facebook Live on just the targeted um, slash immunotherapy, like triplet therapy, because it actually just got approved by the FDA. So I think that it kind of warrants its own space. Um, and it also involves a little bit more biology to explain how it works. But there is, um, there definitely is a benefit from using triplet therapy as well. 
So Gary wants to know, what if you have inflammation from immunotherapy? Um, is BRAF MEK less likely to work? Um, so there hasn't been any data to suggest that BRAF and MEK are affected by things like you know, the inflammatory, like colitis or dermatitis or hepatitis, that it adversely affects BRAF MEK from working. Um, one of the primary things that has to be present is the actual BRAF mutation um, at V600E or K. Um, if you don't have that mutation, the BRAF MEK inhibitors actually won't work. Um, but really having a inflammatory response to immunotherapy doesn't negate um, BRAF MEK from working. Um, Nicole... My oncologist gave me a choice of immunotherapy or targeted therapy. Is it normal for the decision to be left up to the patient in an adjuvant setting? Um, Nicole, we can talk about this on, offline and actually um, have a really good kind of pre-populated um, um, data information set for you. Um, it actually is a decision that you and your oncologist should make together because they have very similar response rates. Um, it actually is a very personalized decision based on, you know, the way that you want your treatment to be given, um, oral versus IV, um, side effect profiles, your lifestyle, your general health. So there are a lot of factors that kind of go into making the decision as to whether you do immunotherapy or targeted therapy. So it's not, it's not like he's trying probably to say, oh, I don't know, you decide. It's more that he wants you to participate in the decision because they are two very different um, treatments with very different, um, not only administration, but side effects and, and things like that. So, um, if you want, you can contact me, um, again, by my one eight seven seven number or by the email, um, form. <clears throat> and I'm happy to go over that more in depth with you. Um, Art, same thing. I would really, I really would like to talk to you offline as well. Um, Carol, I haven't heard of the holistic Trojan horse with maple syrup and baking soda. Um, you know, that, that hasn't been studied in a, in a clinical setting. Um, bum, bum, bum. Yeah, Carol, we definitely will talk about triplet therapy in the future for sure. That's a really good topic. <clears throat> and Lisa, um, in terms of learning about diets good for melanoma, there actually is not a documented diet um, that is specific to melanoma. Um, there were, we talked about it, I think, in a lecture a while ago about nutrition, um, which you can find in the archive videos, both on Facebook and um, on our YouTube channel um, via Aim at Melanoma, which I think actually they just <laughs> are posting some of our links. Um, but you can actually um, learn a little bit more about that. Then it has, uh, what they do know is microbiome is really important and that's something that at some point we'll probably talk about as well um, on, a, on a later topic. Um, yeah, so again, thank you for everybody tuning in. Um, if there are other things that people wanna ask, uh, the link um, aim, the Ask an Expert link is below. You can click on that link and get in touch with me. I'm happy to explain anything. Education is like one of my favorite things for patients. I think that it's super helpful. Um, so you can reach me with any additional questions that you might have. Again, if you're watching this video, please put in the comment section where you are um, watching from both the city and state. Also hit the comments up with um, what future topics. I think we've gotten some really good ideas from the comments that have already been placed. But if you're watching this after the fact, um, please leave comments with some other topic ideas. It's been so long since I saw all of you. Um, so it's, it's nice to be back to our regular routine um, outside of some of the COVID stuff. So we'll tune in again next month with another topic um, and we'll see you guys soon. Have a happy Wednesday.